Okay. All right. Thanks for waiting. Good morning. Uh, this is the regular meeting of our zoning and planning committee. I'll call the meeting to order. It's April 20th, 2017. I'm Lisa Bender. I chair the committee. We now have quorum with council members Goodman, Johnson, and Warsami. We have five items on our agenda today. As we typically do, I'll start with the consent items. Item number two is approving a rezoning for 212 James Avenue North and an address on Irving Avenue North for a planned unit development. Item number three is a rezoning at 3241 Cedar Avenue from R2B to R3 to establish three residential units with uses within the existing building. Item number four is approving regulations for fraternities and sororities. And item number five is exterior building materials ordinance uh, referring to staff this work that the Planning Commission has been working on for a couple of years. So I will move items two through five. I do know that staff wanted to make a brief comment on item number four. Thank you, Chair Bender. Just wanted to note one uh, change of substance from the version that was reviewed by the City Planning Commission. Uh, we are still recommending that fraternities and sororities continue to be required to be within one half mile of the uh, campus that they serve, but we, due to the University of Minnesota boundaries being somewhat unclear and, and sort of shifting occasionally, we are proposing to add an additional sentence that says, for the purposes of the University of Minnesota campus, one half mile should be measured from the center of the intersection of 15th Avenue Southeast and University Avenue Southeast. The author is aware of that change and it is reflected in your packets and online, but just wanted to be explicit about that one change from the Planning Commission. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on any of the consent items? Seeing none, all in approval, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And those carried. That brings us back to item number one, which is the one item for public hearing. It's a yard variance appeal for a home at 2701 East Lake of the Isles Parkway. And we'll start with the staff presentation on this item. This is an appeal of a decision by the Zoning Board of Adjustment. Thank you, Chair ben Bender and committee members. <clears throat> the applications before you are variances to reduce the east and south interior side yard setback requirements to allow an addition at 2701 East Lake of the Isles Parkway. <clears throat> Here's an aerial view of the property. There's a two and a half story um, single family dwelling at the, at the property and also a detached garage that was constructed in 2001. Um, the site is over 16,000 square feet in size. It is a reverse corner lot with no adjacent alley, and so there's a curb cut that's accessed off of 27th Street West. The, <clears throat> the applicant is proposing to construct an addition between this existing home and the detached garage, um, and that would, that would result in the garage being part of the, um, of the single family home and therefore it would be subject to all the applicable setbacks of the district, which is 10 feet on each side. Right now, the garage is one foot from the south property line and 1.4 feet from the east property line. <clears throat> As I mentioned before, the existing garage was constructed in 2001, and at that time, the previous owner had to obtain variances in order to construct the garage in that location. Um, the the house is also currently under construction. There's a 645 square foot addition that is under construction and that is located to the west of the garage and to the south of the single family home. Um, so prior to the addition, the garage was located entirely to the south of the house, but now with the, the new addition, it, the, the home wraps around the garage. That leaves a six to eight foot space between the garage and the single family home. And that's what the applicant is wishing to fill in with the 212 square foot addition. And so you can see it's in this area. So that would be the proposed um, new area. The applicant has stated that their reasons for requesting the addition is to enhance safety, security, and providing shelter, and also allowing efficient and functional access to the home. Um, they've also stated that the six to eight foot strip between the garage and the home is um, not, it's, it would not be able to be maintained properly because it's so narrow. The addition is shown on the 
left side of the image. And here's another view from the east. And so that shows where, where it would be filled in from the east. Uh, here's some views from the street. Um, the, and I should mention that the addition would be smooth fiber cement paddle to match the addition while the home is primarily stucco. Here's the space between the garage and the house. And this is along the south property line. Um, so there are three required findings for a variance. CPED does not find that um, the findings are met in, in this case. So CPED does not find that there are practical difficulties in complying with ordinance. While the property is unique, it's a reverse corner lot, there's no rear yard or adjacent alley. These unique qualities are not related to the applicant's request and do not appear to significantly, significantly limit the applicant's options for reasonable use of the property. Prior to the addition that is currently under construction, the garage was located entirely to the south of the home and with the, the new addition, um, there's now only a six to eight foot gap between the house and the garage and, and staff finds that these conditions were created by the applicant. For finding number two, um, the purpose of the setback requirements is to maintain light, air, and separation between uses and properties. The neighboring house to the south is between 3.8 and 5.7 feet from the subject garage. And the neighboring property to the east has a detached garage that is two feet from the subject garage. Although the proposed location would not result in, in, in new significant impacts on adjacent properties, access to light and air, Staff finds that the proposed variance would result in less separation and open space between uses, and it would also further concentrate building bulk coverage, building coverage and bulk toward the residential properties to the south and east. CPED finds that allowing the home to be located 1 to 1.4 feet from growth property lines would not be reasonable given the functionality of the existing detached garage. For finding number three, while the attached garage would be visible from West 27th Street, the proposed addition would not be directly visible from the public street. However, staff does have some concerns about the predominant character of the area. Um, it's very low density there, and there are uh, mostly detached garages, but there are also several uh, dwellings in the area that have attached garages with properties without alley access. Staff's main concern in this area is that um, the proposed addition would create a barrier between the front yard and the ba backyard of the property and it would result in a situation where there would be no on-site circulation possible in the southeast corner of the property. And staff anticipates that this site layout could pose a practical problem for external service providers or utility companies that need to um, maintain access throughout that area. And it could also potentially be a, an issue for the current or future property owners. The Board of Adjustment voted to deny both variances at their March 30th meeting. And the appellant in this case is the original applicant. Their statement is included in your packets, and they're also here to answer any questions and also to present their case. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Are there any questions for staff? There are none, so we will go ahead and open the public hearing and invite the applicant to come up and speak. And we do have the um, Good. I'm sorry. findings. Wasn't sure. Thanks. Not paying attention. Thank you. I'm Carol Lansing. I'm an attorney at Bakery Baker Daniels, 90 South 7th Street. I'm representing the Treen family in this appeal. Um, I did submit a letter that explains the reasons why we believe that the proposed uh, connecting addition, it's just connecting the garage to the house, um, not adding structure closer to the setbacks or in the setbacks, and why we believe those that meets the criteria for a variance. And what um, Diana, thank you, handed out to you our bullet point summaries of that. We believe our findings in support of that. Um, Tim Alt, the project architect, is going to show you exhibits that illustrate the circumstances of the property um, that are described in those findings and the proposed connecting addition. Um, so I just want to say in brief that those findings we believe are that the setbacks are an existing condition, not created by the owner. Um, the fact that there's a gap now between the garage and the house is not what we are saying is um, a practical difficulty. What we are um, 
arguing and, and requesting is that there is no place to put a conforming garage, whether it's attached or detached on the property, that an attached garage is a reasonable use. And their proposed attachment is reasonable and in keeping with the spirit of the ordinance and the character of the area. Um, so before Tim uh, goes through the, those exhibits, the Treans did just want to introduce themselves to you and tell you about um, their request. Thank you. That's the question. Thank you. Welcome. Hi, so I'm, I'm Basser Tureen. This is my wife, Mohiba. Um, thanks for allowing us to present. So, so we purchased the property um, initially in 2014, and um, so a lot of history with this property. It was um, initially, um, we bought it as a foreclosure property with the thought that initially we thought, well, we'll, we'll tear down this house and, and build a new home for ourselves. But as we learned more about it, you know, sort of naively, um, we learned that there was a fair bit of historical significance to the house, and we we talked to city uh, people at the city, and we talked to more importantly the the community, the East Dallas Residents Association, and there was not um, people you know did not favor tearing down the house. And as we sort of learned more, we sort of agreed with that, and we looked at a lot of different options about what to do. Um, I mean, we love living in the city, you know, where, whereas all our Friends that you know, once they have three or four kids, many of them want to shuffle off to the suburbs. You know, we, we wanted to create a nice uh, home for ourselves, and so we spoke a lot with Tim, and we said, how can we take this 100-year-old historic house and make it um, usable for a modern-day family? And so we put a lot of time and effort in construction and design um, to to make the home useful for our, our our four children and one on the way, five five kids soon, um, and, and and so. You know, we looked at how to make it green, and, and so all these challenges, and we were able to do pretty much everything, you know, to, to make it to make it useful for us. And one of the challenges we've always had is um, the garage, which has created the problem. There is just where the property is located. Um, historically, the the home sort of behind it was the carriage house back 100 years ago, and so that's why it's so close. And so there's this very tiny little narrow driveway leading into the garage that was put there in roughly 16 years ago. And so, you know, obviously, if if we could if we could move the house, you know, we would none of these issues would be a problem. And so that was not created by us, and that's really I think the crux of the hardship. Um, and so what we're asking for is a very minor variance to close that six foot gap um, to make what we think will be a much more uh, useful, safer, and and just improve our our home and our quality of life significantly. Um, so I'll let Mohiba talk a little bit about. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, I just want to reiterate that this um, hardship was not created by us. If anything, we wished we could have mitigated it. Um, this we this variance 16 years ago was created by another family. And I want to just explain to you a little bit about my family. I have four children, a seven-year-old, a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and a two-year-old, all boys. We have a fifth child on the way in the summer. And just having a connected garage, you can understand with the strollers and the car seats, it would be very, very beneficial to our family. So just from a personal standpoint, I'm appealing to your personal sense. Um, also, in my Muslim culture, in our Muslim culture, our older parents come live with us when um, when they can no longer live on their own. And thus, we've created our first floor to be completely handicap accessible. Um, and it would be a great benefit to be able to um, bring wheelchairs in and out of um, the garage to our house. So these would be unique circumstances to our family. Thank you very much. Um, so one of the things we did with this process is we, we really want to reach out to the neighborhood and make sure that there wasn't any opposition. So we started with, uh, we, we presented this to the East Dallas Resident Association and um, uh, there was no opposition there. We had good discussion. One of the things that actually came out of it was um, there was some adjacent neighbors that had other concerns that they wanted to work with us on. So that's been sort of one real positive that's come out of this. Um, Billy, Billy Wiseman, who's been a long time you know, neighbor there, for example, had issues on his property with with the poles, and so we actually with um, lighting poles and electric poles, and so we've actually met with the adjacent neighbors and kind of come up with a plan that will make it better for everybody. Um, there's several letters of support you can see, and as far as I can tell, I don't think there's any opposition or nothing that I've heard. And Lisa will be the first to tell you our neighbors are not shy; they're willing to call when there's an issue, and they're very engaged. So I think if there was any opposition, you would probably hear about it. Um, the variance that we're requesting, it's not visible from the street at all. So it really only impacts us. We're really essentially the only people that can really see it. Um, and so, you know, from that standpoint, there's really there's really no downside or you know negative impact to the rest of the neighborhood. It still keeps within the character of it. And Tim will talk a little bit about he's done a survey to look at the neighborhood and how many um, garages are attached and how many aren't. 
Um, and then, I, in addition, I actually invited the entire East Dallas resident uh, board to come look at the at, at the house. And we actually, I tried to get them to come. Actually, ideally, I wanted them to come before the meeting, but next week I'm actually going to give them a tour of the house and do a walkthrough. So it's been a very collaborative process. We've we've met with you know neighbors and the resident association and, and done whatever we can to sort of make sure that there wasn't um, any issues that would negatively impact anybody. And from what we can tell so far, there's been really nothing there. So so overall. And oh, one other issue I should mention, you know, with a 100-year-old home, we want to try to make it as energy efficient as possible. So we are going to add solar panels. Um, and those solar panels, actually, the ideal place is on that side of the house, which is where the sun is. So just even that little six-foot connection gives us an extra couple of panels, which is which is certainly a benefit. Um, so overall, well, I'll let Tim speak, who, you know, uh, you know, mailing and, and Tim, obviously, are much smarter than me and understand um, some of the details. And, and obviously, it's a... It's a subjective issue of the hardship, but I feel, from my standpoint, from a from a constituent standpoint, um, this is something that would greatly benefit our house, make our lives better, and we think just be a big benefit for our family. So I hope you'll consider that and, and help us out with that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Tim Alt. I'm principal of Altus Architecture and Design at 945 Broadway Street Northeast. Um, I'm going to try to run through a few items that um, are, I think, a clarification of um, the scope of what we're trying to do and address the three issues. Some of these are going to be uh, covering some of the things that Boster and Carol covered as well. Um, I just want to start with uh, reiterating the array of issues that make this property unique and therefore create an undue hardship uh, overall. Um, if you look at the, the, I've tried to emphasize a couple of issues. The, the perimeter blue line is the property line. The yellow line are the setback lines and the highlighted blue is the length that would be the element we're asking for the variance on. Um, what I want to try to illustrate is the fact that um, practical difficulties do exist from the history of the home. Um, you may or may not be aware of all these details or have, have been a student of these in the proposals, but um, this is one of the first four houses built on Lake of the Isles, built in, 19, in 1887. And at that time, this property was a through street property, meaning that it encompassed all the way between uh, Lake of the Isles Parkway and Irving. Uh, and as Boster mentioned, that the, uh, the adjacent house to the, to the east was the original carriage house. So. When that property was subdivided um, much time, much later, that created a an atypical placement of our property. As you can see, the the house to the south, the, the Hex property, the Hex property uh, is much much further east or west. I'm sorry, towards the lake, uh, therefore giving themselves a lot more open area to work with. Um, so that's one major issue, um, and we just want to make sure that that that, that is understood. That the reverse corner lot also creates an undue burden due to the fact. That we do not have a typical side yard and our rear yard setback. Um, as mentioned before, we do have the uh, uh, the adjacent uh, garage was built in 2001 um, by the previous owner um, and had a series of mitigating issues that um, were not necessarily satisfied by that owner. Um, so uh, we want to make sure that that's that's clear and understood. And I want to just emphasize the sort of discrete nature of what's happening with the addition. The highlighted blue illustrates the connection that would simply extend the existing line of the uh, addition on the south side. And then to the east, again, not necessarily visible from the street, would be uh, simply a doorway connection to the main body of the house. Uh, the photos here, again, to illustrate um, the lack of visibility on the property um, of, the, of the connection. The, the lower photographs illustrate where that uh, discrete connection would be. Really not visible at all from either uh, East Lake of the Isles or uh, 27th. And therefore, we think it's really not a, uh, a, uh, an issue for the context. Uh, I just want to emphasize again um, the sort of the reasonableness or the manner of what we're trying to to do with the property. Um, the connection, as the Tureens mentioned, would allow them to be able to, to move directly between the garage and the house. Um, it's not 
going to affect uh, anybody on the east or the south relative to light and air. So um, we as well were only, uh, because of the overall size of the property and the footprint of the house, we're only going to be 31.9% of the hardcover, where 45% is allowed. Um, the property is accessible on all sides. Um, and is also in keeping with the city's policies to create uh, investment in the existing properties. And I think we've done that quite well. Um, I think part of the, the, this next exhibit starts, these next two exhibits illustrate the, the challenge of trying to satisfy um, the current zoning code and, and allow an attached garage to be within the setbacks. Uh, the current garage loads from the north in order to attach it and have um, a way to enter from the east, um, we would have to destroy part of the existing house um, regardless of the fact that the addition is there. So that was something we did not believe at the time it was appropriate for the context, for the inter integrity of the house, and we felt we would get some distinct opposition from the neighborhood. In order for us to maintain an existing, or I'm sorry, relocated detached garage, within what the city's findings would allow us to do in, in slightly reduced setbacks. Um, functionally, one third of the east of the house would have had to be demolished simply to get access and car queuing into the north side of a relocated detached garage. None of these seem very viable or feasible to be allowed. Uh, just And then, again, related to item number three, uh, relative to the context and, and how um, how consistent this is with what's already in the neighborhood. Um, of the 42 houses that we've surveyed in the area, uh, this drawing illustrates um, 31 of them have attached garages. Those are the green items identified in the, in the graphic plan. Uh, the yellow is the Tureen's residence. Um, therefore, it, on this series of unique sites on the East Lake of the Isles, that 67% of those properties do have attached garages. Uh, of those 31, um, 11 of them appear to have non-conforming conditions relative to existing setbacks. Uh, I'm gonna just run through these quickly because I think it's relevant to our overall discussion. Um, I'm gonna start from south to north. Um, down at, on the 28th block, uh, these three sites, um, 2015, 2015, 2821, and 2825, all have alley access to their attached garages, which we do not have as a reverse corner lot. Um, each of them appears to have garages or uh, setback in friction, in sort of, um, impinging on the uh, current setbacks, which are the yellow lines. Uh, as well, at 2809, um, Looks like the east edge of that is right uh, within six feet of the alleyway. Uh, the reverse corner lot at 2801 uh, has uh, attached structure right up on the property line and has um, more recently built uh, garages that are within the six foot uh, side yard as well as, uh, I'm sorry, rear yard setback along the alley. Um, across the street at 2737, um, the attached uh, garage and primary structure are within the uh, 12 yard, 12 foot side yard or um, as a reverse corner lot does not have a um, rear yard setback and has larger side yard setbacks due to the size of the property. Uh, 2721 has an attached garage and has um, area you can see in the photograph that is right up against the property line uh, as well as in the back of the property. Uh, these two houses difficult to photograph um, but again the, the the attached garages at the back of their properties are within the setbacks. Uh, down up at 2667 uh, again alley access for a reverse corner lot has both an attached and detached garage uh, the detached garage uh, in the background of the photograph uh, is certainly well within the setbacks. 24, uh, 27 um, has an attached garage that is um, 
within the side yard setback of the uh, reverse corner allowed setbacks. Uh, and then 2225 um, appears to have a news garage that has been attached to the house that has uh, uh, appears to be less than an eight foot setback from its boundary. So I just wanted to uh, reiterate that we do not believe that what we are proposing to do is unreasonable. We do not believe that it is out of context given um, one quarter of the houses within our immediate context appear to have um, non-conforming conditions and that we uh, we think we've done a good job of trying to maintain the character of the neighborhood with this proposal so we request that you approve the variance and uh, allow us to proceed oh and just to kind of reiterate um, the foster mentioned about the utility pole right yep so um, at the corner of the properties uh, mr. Weissman's property is is to the lower right uh, the Hacks property is to the lower left, and the intersection of their property lines, um, there's a power pole, and we've been working with them to um, omit that power line, bury the, the utilities, and work with them to uh, address our, our boundaries together so that we're sensitive neighbors. Um, we think that will, that's somebody independent of this, but we also you know, think it's an issue that we're working in the spirit of the neighborhood, um, and neither of them have a problem with our proposed addition. Thank you. All right, thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? Anyone else? Is there any questions or anything for staff? I'll close the public hearing then. Councilmember Goodman. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm going to move to grant the appeal. I do want to make a few comments about this, however. Um, quite frankly, I'm embarrassed for you that you had to come in here and make this point against the argument that what you were suggesting was inconsistent with the character of the neighborhood because it clearly is completely consistent, and I'm glad Mr. Alt walked us through that. Um, that's the part that I kind of take issue with the most, that the staff and the uh, Board of Adjustment were concerned with the character of the neighborhood. Um, I have had interactions with this house for my entire career. Uh, Mr. McComb uh, was not the best owner of the property, added some very inconsistent to the character of the house conditions uh, that the Tureens are trying to uh, correct. I'll also note that the Tureens did attempt to demolish the building and through a community process backed off that idea before it got to us. They could have taken it all the way to us and it probably would have been rejected, but nonetheless, they took what the neighbors had to say pretty seriously. And I think that what they're doing with the house is completely consistent with the character of the neighborhood and quite frankly, an amazing investment that will grow our city's tax base. I'll also say that it's been my experience that a reverse corner lot in and of itself presents a potential practical difficulty, and that has been a finding we've made in the past. And I'll note, uh, and I would urge my colleagues to look at this drawing, which is really uh, screams to me what the applicants could have done but did not. They have a gigantic lawn in the front of this house and no yard in the back and five kids. If you, all the parents up here would probably would say they'd want the reverse situation where they'd have a huge yard for their five kids in the back that was more private and not have this gigantic public lawn. They didn't even extend their addition out into the public lawn for fear of disrupting the character of the neighborhood as based on the concerns of the neighborhood association and the immediate neighbors. Uh, so I think what they've done here is unbelievable and it went from something really terrible to something really terrific. And I'm really happy about what's happening here because the neighborhood feels good about it. And they feel good about the process people feel listened to. The fact that you would bury a power line at your own expense and work with Billy Weissman to try to figure that out, I just think is amazing. So uh, this is a no-brainer. I'm sorry you had to go through this to suggest that this was not consistent with the character of this neighborhood because it is. And as a result, um, your family moving to this neighborhood will be loved by everybody, and I don't think you have to justify why you would or would not want an attached garage. I've lived in a house with an attached garage. I live in one now. I realize it's not like the perfect thing, but you know, the house I live in was built in 1950, so there was an attached garage. So uh, I am uh, grateful you've put all this energy and effort into it. Other people probably would not have had the time and money to spend on making this case. 
Uh, and this will be a multi-million dollar addition to a very expensive house, which will generate God knows what in property taxes, at the same time being consistent with what the neighborhood is and what the neighborhoods really want. Okay. Thank you. So the motion then is to grant the appeal. Is there any further discussion on that motion? There is. And I'll just mention uh, again, thank you so much for coming today and having seen all of the details from the architect really did help make the case. Um, when I just heard about it from staff, uh, I wasn't sure, you know, but really this is why we have this opportunity to come make your case because it did, um, I think, make the compelling argument that what you've done here makes a lot of sense in this community. And thanks for all the care you're taking. Lake of the Isles is a really important part, of course, of the seventh ward, but also the city. Uh, so we want to welcome you to the community and, and thanks again for coming today. All right. All those in favor then of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That carries. And then we are adjourned with no Madam, more. Madam Chair, me. I think it oh, also. And we need, I'm sorry. I think I know what you're going to say now. <laughs> I still need the reminder. Uh, then I will actually also move to direct staff to prepare findings um, along with the motion that just passed. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That carries. And now we are adjourned. Thank you. Thanks to staff as well.